Welcome Brittany and Kate and Jeremy and Pooja and Caledon and um, thanks for showing up today. Um, this is the week four webinar and um, the goal is to talk about chapter six which is the normal distribution. It's an essential essential topic but the good news is um, it's actually pretty short so I expect this to be one of our shorter webinars. It might even you know it go a lot shorter than you expect. Um, but there's also a main thing coming up this week. And what is that? Hope y'all know. Yeah, yeah. So note that the project is due on Sunday. So I want to, you know, emphasize how important that is. That is a huge, a huge part of your grade. So make sure, make sure that you are um, really spend your effort, a lot of effort working on that project and making sure it's great. Um, just some timelines. Um, the hope is that all of you have made a lot of progress on it already. So again, if you're just starting, you need to worry a lot because you need to you know, get moving on it. Uh, the hope is by <coughs> Wednesday night or Thursday morning, early morning, um, that you can email me your draft of Project One so that I can take a look at it and I can help you out and make it better and help you make it better. Give you suggestions is what I do. I usually do like a top 10 list, something like that, depending on how much stuff it needs. Um, so that's kind of the, you know, a big deal is you want to have a draft, a full draft written by then. Uh, a couple things about the project, just to remind you, don't forget to include the spreadsheet in your paper itself, you know, copy and paste it in. And uh, that's a biggie. Make sure you read through the full project discussion, uh, I mean, the full project uh, one topics and lists, and also that link where, that, where I give feedback from other people so you know what went right and what went wrong. Uh, there's a lot of things to look at that'll help you out with that project. And then post on the project one discussion board any questions you might have um, as you work on the project. And make sure that all of you, even though you're, you know, you may be writing different parts of it, make sure that you're all working together. So when someone else has written part of the project, make sure you read it and help, help the person out, help each other out, make sure it's all clear. Um, so that's the project. I do want to mention one more thing. Um, for the discussion posts that are due every week, make sure you read my model post. And that really is a model. So use that as an idea of what I expect. So for this last discussion assignment um, last week, there are a lot of you that did not do a full interpretation of the value, the expected value, not just the whether it's positive or negative, but the number itself. And again, I always do a model post to talk about what that number means. So um, anyway, I always look at my model post to get you an idea of what you need to do, because I graded it to, I graded them today and a lot of you just said, oh, it's positive, so it's good, or it's negative, so it's bad. But I wanted to hear about the value, not just the sign of the value. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, so that's just something to look at. Use my post as a model. Doesn't mean you should copy and paste it, but kind of understand also gives you a, a little bit of an idea of how long your answer should be. So if all you did was do the calculation and don't have any words, then you didn't follow the model. Okay, and there was a group of you that did that also. So again, you know, take a look at that, make sure that you, you get that all set up. So are there any questions before I get going? Any questions at all? I'm listening, I'm also looking at the chat box, giving you some time to think about it. Are there any questions at all? Okay, if there aren't questions, I'll get going. I want to mention something. We're doing chapter six. It's, um, it's a really important chapter, but it's not difficult. Most people like it. Um, you know, I can challenge you, of course, but, but it's not that bad. Um, so we'll um, take a look. So what I want to do, um, this is a very different kind of chapter. Um, it's not one of those I can pull up a current event on. It's really going to be a main um, tool that we're going to use for the rest of the chapters. So this is the one week where I'm not going to pull up a news article and show you, you know, how it's used. It'll be more kind of general mathy looking kind of problems, lots of graphs, things like that. So let me pull up. Okay. 
the screen so I can show you what's up. <clears throat> okay, so what we want to talk about is the normal distribution. Now I've mentioned it before. You remember what I said about normal? You remember? If it's a normal distribution, because we have talked about it. When we talked about histogram, we talked about it. I'm not seeing all chime in, but. Okay, let me draw it and maybe that'll help you remember. So a normal distribution curve. Looks something like that. Again, I'm not a perfect artist, but hopefully you get the idea. And you've seen it before, you've even heard the, a different word for this. What's the other word that you've heard before? Yeah, bell curve. Okay, it's also known as bell curve. But in this class, we're going to call it a normal distribution curve. Um, it's also at, sometimes called the Gaussian curve because that's kind of the guy who really made it important um, a long time ago. One of these super brilliant people from over 100 years ago. Um, and there are some interesting things. First thing is that there are lots of normal distribution curves but they can all be characterized by what the mean is and what the standard deviation is. Okay, so that's really important to note. So for, I'm gonna do what's called the standard normal first. And if you have a standard normal distribution, then the mean is zero. And the standard deviation is one. So what we can say is that, and again, by the way, when you have that, we usually at Z be the letter for that. And we go Z tilde N zero comma one. This is a standard normal distribution curve. Any questions on that so far? Okay, if we look at the area, between negative one and one, then that area contains about 68%. Okay, so there's a 68, there's a 0.68 probability that if you're looking at a standard normal variable, that it's gonna be between negative one and one. Any questions so far? Okay, the next one's even more important, and that is if we're going to be looking, let's do it in a different color, how about red, because that's the most important. If we're looking between negative two and two, so two standard deviations away from the mean, then that area is about 95%. And we're gonna be using that number a lot in this class. So that's about 95% of the, of the whole area. Any questions so far? Okay, I'm not going to draw the last one. It's a little less important, but it's important. If you go negative three to three, it's about 99.7. It's almost all of it. Okay, just note, remember if, if you're farther than two away as a z-score, you remember what we call that, that outcome? What's the word for it? Starts with an O. Who remember what you call it if you're farther than two away? So more than two, yeah, then it's an outlier. So if you're more than two standard deviations, it's an outlier, and that's because you have, 
you have less than 5% chance of it being so extreme. Because if 95% is inside, 5% is outside. Okay, any questions on that? And at negative, and, th and farther than three away, we call extreme outlier. That's super extreme because we're talking 99.7 inside. So less, so it's 0.3% chance, which is almost nothing. Any questions at all on the idea of the standard normal curve? All right, you can also do a general normal curve, and I'm just gonna write it below, because it's actually, it's the same, except the numbers are gonna be different. So I think I need to do a brush, actually. Let's do it in, how about this color? So you don't have to have the mean being zero, you could have the mean being mu, and this would be mu plus sigma. And this would be mu minus sigma. And similarly, this one here would be mu plus two sigma. So two standard deviations away. Picture looks the same. And this over here would be mu minus two sigma. Any questions on that? So it's really the same curve, same picture, but it's not standard normal. Now it's just general normal. All right, you ready to do some work? Okay, so let's look at some questions. I'm going to erase this, but this is a very important curve, and you are all responsible for knowing the shape of it and for understanding this 95, the 68, 95, 99.7 which I didn't write the 99.7, but you've heard it now. All right, so let me um, kill this and start putting a question in. There we go. All right, so now let's um, drop in a question. Okay, so here we go. Let's suppose we have a standard normal distribution. What's the probability of a year between negative one and one? You should all be able to tell me right now without any work, really. Yeah, 0.68 actually, right? Okay, so it's 0.68. So the answer to part A is 0.68 because I just showed you that. Okay, now comes the interesting part. Now we're going to have to use a little bit of basic geometry. Find the probability that z is less than three. So here it's going to help to draw the picture. Okay, because you're not going to just know this one out of memory. Picture today is always the same. It's always going to be a normal curve. Okay, so now we're looking at less than three. So there's three. Not necessarily drawn to scale. And we want to find this area. Because remember, probability is the area under the curve. Okay, the first thing I do is even though it's not part of the question, it helps a lot to put in the symmetric other side of it and write that and go negative three. Any questions on that so far? Okay, so as I mentioned, I didn't write it down, but I mentioned it. What is the area between negative three and three? Yeah, 0.997. Any questions on that? All right. 
So if it's 0.997 inside, how much is outside? Yeah, 0 0.003. So if we want the left part of the outside, we just take that and divide by two. Any questions on that idea? So that's 0 0.003 over two. So if we want this total area, we just add them up. Okay, why do we divide by two? Because there's 0 0.003 outside, but the outside is both left and right. And we just want left. And left is half of left and right. Is that clear? So it's a really good question and it's important to, you know, see the picture. So now if we want the total probability, it's actually pretty simple. Probably is less than three is just going to be um, 0 0.003 over 2, which is 0 0.0015 plus 0 0.997, which is equal to 0 0.9985. Any questions on that? That clear? Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the probability that, uh, I think I'll do the part D again, uh, oh, maybe I have time, probability that it's between negative one and two. So I'm going to start again and I'm going to draw a new graph. Same idea though. So there we go, and here's negative one. There's two over here. And we want this area. Any questions on that so far? Okay, now we don't have a rule that talks about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add to this picture a little bit. So what I'm gonna add is let's pop in two. Uh, negative two, sorry. Any questions so far? Okay. And there's a few ways of doing this, by the way. One way is we say, well, what's the area between negative two and two that you're all supposed to know? Yeah, we know that's 95%. Okay, so if you, want, if you want to think about it, we can say, well, 95%, but we got to subtract this part between negative one and negative two. So let's write down, I'm just going to start it out. So we're going to go 0.95 minus, now I'm going to start thinking. How do I find the area between negative two and negative one? Well, if you take the area between negative two, negative two and two and subtract the area between negative one and one, that gives you kind of two inner pieces. If I divide that by two, that'll give you what I need to subtract out. So between negative two and two is 0 0.95. If I subtract 0 0.68, and then divide by two, that'll give my answer. Let me explain this with a picture a little better. So it helps to realize what we're doing. So if I draw some more, here's one, okay? So if I draw that one there, then we know between one, negative one and one is the 0.68. We know between negative two and two is the 0.95. So that tells you if you subtract the two, then that's gonna give you 
this region here and this region here. Because if we take between negative two and two and remove between negative one and one, I'm left with those two regions. Now, I don't want those two regions. I want to subtract off only the left region, so that's half of it. And that's where that comes in. Any questions on that? And as Brittany says, 0.815. Any questions on that idea? Okay, so now let's find the value of z such as is a two and a half percent probability of being greater than this value. All right, so let me draw another picture. I'll do it in red just to show the difference in the other one. All right, the key on this is if there's a two and a half percent chance of being greater than this value, that's over here somewhere. And that's point zero two five. That's two and a half percent. Well, let's draw the symmetric picture. So let's draw this also and make that point zero two five. That's an awful 0 0.025. Let me get it one more time. Let's do it with a better way. That's a lot better. Okay, so how much total is to the left and right? Point zero 0.05. Yeah, point zero 0.05. So how much is inside? If 5% is outside, how much is inside? 95% or 0.95. But we know that if there's 0.95 inside, then the big marker on the right is going to be 2. Because that was what we call the empirical rule, is that between negative two and two is 95%. So the answer is two. Any questions at all on any of these examples? Any questions? Okay, so I'm gonna erase this, and then we're gonna go to the next type. Okay, there's a bunch of types, but I don't think any of these are too bad. So let me erase. There we go. And let's put the next one in. Uh, can you give the answer again? Yeah, the answer is two, because if there's two and a half percent to the right, there's two and a half percent to the left, that's a total of 5%. That means there is 95% inside. And the 95, that the rule was two standard deviations or two. So hopefully that makes some sense. Okay, so here we have a new question. Now we're gonna say X follows the normal distribution, but now it's not standard. Mean is 114, standard deviation is 23. Let's find the probability that x is between 100 and 120. So the first thing I do is I draw a picture. And by the way, on the midterm and the final, you must show your picture. It's not, it's not an option. So that's the picture. <coughs> the mean is 114. And then 
we want to find out between 100 and 120. So notice 100 is to the left of 114. And 120 is to the right. Any questions on that? Okay, I want that area. So the key on this one is we need our calculator. There is no way you're going to do this without a calculator. So I always on in these webinars, I recommend you working on your calculator as I work on mine also. And I'm going to do a new share so we can see the calculator. Not sure if you can still see it. Let me try something. Stop share and one more time. There. Yeah. Okay. So let me erase what we had before. All right. So what we do here, and again, you want to follow along. I'm going to go second distribution, just like when we did binomial distribution. Now it's going to be a normal distribution. And I'm going to go normal CDF. By the way, normal PDF, if you ever use normal PDF, then you're wrong. We're not going to use that in this class. So it's normal CDF for cumulative distribution. I'm going to hit enter. Now different calculators look a little different. So if your, yours might look different, even if it's the same 84. Okay, the lower bound here was 100, if you remember. And the upper bound was 120, because we're going from 100 to 120. The mean was 114. The standard deviation was 23. I get down to paste and I hit enter. And then I hit enter again. So if you had the older style calculator, it'll just show normal CDF and you type in 100 comma 120 comma 114 comma 23 and parentheses. But the newer ones look like what I just showed you. And our probability was about 0.33. Any questions on how that works? Okay, so it's actually, the, the calculator is pretty nice, pretty easy to use, isn't it? Okay, let's look at the next one. Let's find the probability that x is greater than 200. So again, I need to draw my picture. So we have 114. We have 200. And we want to find out what's the probability that is greater than 200. Notice it's going to be smaller, a pretty small number. And let's go to our calculator. So let's do that. So I'm going to go again to second distribution. I'm going to go to normal CDF. OK, my low now is 200 because I want to be greater than 200. What's the high? If you want to be greater than 200, how high can you be? So how high can you be if you want to be greater than 200? So let's see if you can tell me. Yeah, infinite is one possibility. Um, so 1E99, that's technically OK, too. Let me just show you the easiest thing to do is put in a bunch of nines. And you want to put in at least two more nines than the number of digits that everything else is. I think I put in a bunch more. I put in four more nines. And more is OK. And that'll always work. Because again, if you have two more nines, that means you're so many standard deviations away from the mean that it's not going to notice. 
Okay. The mean and standard deviations were the same for this problem. And I hit enter and enter again. Okay, so is the probability 9.24 about? What do you think? Is that the probability, 9.24? Okay, right, it's not. You can never have a probability bigger than one. Remember that, very important. You gotta see that E negative five and what that means, you gotta move the decimal over five places. So you got 0.00009.24 about. And that's the probability, very small probability. Any questions on that? Okay, the next one is let's find the probability that x is less than 90. So I have to draw again. So there's my normal curve, there's 114. I want to be less than 90. So 90 is over here somewhere. And I want that area. So I go to my calculator. Okay, you really need the calculator on these. And I go back to distribution. I go normal CDF. Now, less than 90. How low could it be if it's less than 90? Okay, you say zero, but it could be negative one is less than 90, right, Brittany? Yeah, negative and a bunch of nines. So I'm going to go negative, and again, you want at least two more nines than the number of digits and everything else. And then the upper is 90. And then the mean and standard deviation were the same. And I hit enter. And enter again. And it's about 15%. Any questions on that? Any questions on how that works? Okay, next one. Let's find the IQR. Okay, so let's draw a picture as always. Here's 114. Who remembers what IQR means? Yeah, it's the interquartile range. And in particular, what that means is that we're going to need to find the first quartile, which is here, and the third quartile, which is here. And what we know is that this area is 0.25. And then this area to the left of Q3 is 0.75. Any questions on that? Any questions? All right. Now this is different because notice here we know the area and we want to get the value of x, right? Okay, where all the others is we're given x and you plug it into the function. Who remembers in math, I know it's your favorite subject, what you call it when you're going backwards for a function? What word do we use? Yeah, it's the inverse. So that's important to remember. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my calculator. And I'm going to go second distribution. But I'm not going to do normal CDF 
Any guess on what I'm going to do now? Yeah, inv norm, because I want the inverse normal. So the Texas people were pretty nice writing this out. And again, this looks different than the older calculators. I have videos for the older calculators in the other videos, so I try and do the new ones in these. So now the area, let's do the first quartile first, that was 0.25. The mean was 114. The standard deviation, if you remember, was 23. And I do want a left tail. And I paste. Now, if you have a older calculator, you're going to do M norm, hit enter. You can do 0 0.25, comma 114, comma 23, and then end the parentheses and hit enter. So it'll look a little different. But I have the newer one. So there we have 98.5 or so. Okay, now what I'm going to show you, it's a nice little trick. I want exactly the same thing, but I want 75% instead of 25%. So I'm going to go second. Entry, and I'm just going to change that to, to a five to make it 75%. And I hit enter. Any questions on that way of uh, just kind of copying and pasting is what it is. So then the final answer, I'm going to go, how about one decimal, is 129.5. Minus, because remember the interquartile range means subtract Q3 minus Q1, minus 98.5. Uh, why did we use 0.25 area? Okay, so Q1 means the 25th percentile. You remember that? And 25th percentile means the area is 0.25. So that's why, because that's what we want. We want Q1. And then Q3 was 0.75. OK, any other questions? These are good questions, real important. All right, let's do the last one. Last one's very different, actually. Find the z-score for the x value of 117. Yeah, you may not have. Most calculators don't have the left or right option, so then don't put left or right in. I use left only anyway, and that's always fine. So you're just going to do norm, and then you're just going to put in your 0 0.25, your 114, comma, uh, 23, and end the parentheses, Jeremy, and then it should give it to you. And you should get the same thing I got. Again, Texas Instruments change, changes year to year. So sorry if it looks slightly different with your calculator. Can you see what I did for the last step? Oh, I subtracted. That's all I did. I took the Q3 number and I subtracted the Q1 number. Does that make sense, Peter? Yeah, so nothing, nothing uh, very fancy there because that's what the interquartile range is. You're supposed to subtract, subtract the numbers. Okay, the last is find the z-score for the value of 117. Who remembers the formula for z-score? Um, not minus, not quite. It's actually X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Yeah, so it's nothing to do with the median. It's X minus the mean over the standard deviation. Here, X is 117. The mean was 114. And the standard deviation was 23. Matter of order of operations, you got to do the numerator first. So that's 3 over 23. Any questions on that? And then I'm going to leave it as a fraction. I'm happy enough with that. 
but you can stick it in the calculator and get a decimal if you want. Any questions on this example? Any questions? Okay, so now I'm gonna do some applications, although we're not gonna see the real application, but we're gonna do an application or two. There's a fun little application. Oh, I gotta erase this. All right, so here's a nice little application. Okay, suppose that the time until you or your wife, if you're male, get, will give birth is normally distributed with mean 140 days and standard deviation seven days. Okay, so by the way, if the mean is 140 days, what is that? What are like the general like English words for that? What do you tell someone? What does that mean to say the mean is 140 days? You have another word for that? It's not a math word. Yeah, expecting. So that means you're expecting in 140 days, standard deviation is about a week, okay? And by the way, that used to be about right, and it used to be normal and all that, and then things have changed. Anyone know why things have changed? Again, not a math thing. Why people have changed. <laughs> Any thoughts? Should I tell you? C-sections. So with natural births, it actually is normally distributed with um, standard deviation about seven days. But now there's C-sections, everything changed. So we're gonna pretend that you're not gonna have a C-section, got it? Makes it easy. Okay, so here's the question. Your boss has just scheduled you or your wife for a business trip to China. Now I wrote this before this week. So just ignore the fact that if you go to China, you might die of that coronavirus. So forget about that part, <laughs> okay? Um, you or your wife leave today and you're gonna return in 135 days. Find the probability that your baby will be born in China. Okay, any questions on the question? Okay, what's the first thing we should do here? Yeah, we're gonna draw a picture. And hopefully you know what the picture is gonna look like because it's always the same. So let's draw a picture. normal curve. We know that the mean is 140, because that's your due date. Any questions so far? Okay, we want to find out, we want to find out that um, the baby will be born in China. Well, we're going to leave today, that's now, we can call that negative infinity or zero. It actually doesn't make a difference. And we're going to return in 135 days. So 135 is over here somewhere. The baby will be born in China if it's born before we return. Okay, this is 135. Any questions on that? So with the picture now starting to look like the other ones, isn't it? So I can go right to my calculator and answer the question. So let's do that. So what I can do is I can go second distribution, normal CDF. And the low is, um, I like to use negative bunch of nines. You could use zero if you want to in this case because you can't be born yesterday but it won't, it'll give you the same answer. The upper was 135. 
and the lower is 140. The standard deviation, or the mean was 140, and the standard deviation was seven. Any questions so far? Enter, and then enter again. Okay, so about a 24% chance. So what do you think? Think that's okay? Think it's okay if there's a 24% chance a baby's gonna be born in China? Would you be fine with that? Dual citizenship, but remember your baby can't be president. Not to mention there's all kinds of issues with um, medical care in China versus here. <laughs> okay, you guys don't get it. It's not okay. <laughs> Sounds like you haven't had babies before. <laughs> and if you have a baby <laughs> or had a baby, <laughs> yeah, Kate, you probably know. That's not okay, right? Jeremy, you should know. You, would, you be, would your wife be okay if you were in China when the baby was born? Okay, probably not okay. Okay. All right, so let's look at part B and we'll see what, why I was talking the way I was talking. Okay, you decide it's too risky. So you want to renegotiate. You're gonna negotiate with the boss to ensure there's no more than a 1% chance the baby's gonna be born in China. What day should you ask to be the return date? Any questions on the question now? How is this different than part A? What do you think? How, how is this different than part A? What's the main difference? Yeah, this time we're given the area and we want to find X. So in the calculator, what do you think we're gonna end up using? Yeah, this time we're gonna use the inv norm. So I'm now gonna draw the picture in green. We have 0.01 for the area, and then X is that special value that we're gonna decide it's okay to return home. Okay, because you still don't wanna lose your job. So you negotiate. So let's go find it. All right, so now I'm gonna to go to second distribution and I'm gonna do inv norm. And the area is 0 0.01. The mean was 140. The standard deviation was seven. Left tail's fine. And I paste. And I hit enter. So now, instead of leaving um, at day 135, now we're going to leave, we're going to come back to America after 123 days. Remember, earlier is a little better, so you can negotiate to 123. You could say 124, but 123 is even better in this case. Any questions so far? Okay, now let's do the last one on this question. So it's now 138 days later, okay? You just returned home, okay? The baby still has not been born. Find the probability the baby will be born within the next 24 hours. So what does this one use? Any thoughts? How is this different than, the, than everything else we've done today? It's definitely different.
I'm not seeing I'll answer. This is actually conditional probability. It's a different low number, but all the numbers have been different, but it's a conditional probability. So let me write this in terms of symbols and probability now. So we want the probability that X is between 138 and 139 given that X is greater than 138. Any questions on that? So now we're back to chapter three. So when you have one of these given problems, we have a formula and that says that that's the probability of both happening. Well, if you're in between 138 and 139 and you're greater than 138, that just means you're between 138 and 139. So now I'm gonna write down the probability that X is between 138 and 139. And then I'm gonna divide it by the probability that we're bigger than 138. Any questions on that? Okay, so now what I do is I draw my picture. I'm going to redraw because got the other one's getting too busy. Okay, the mean is still 140. Oops. And we're looking at 138 and 139 are the two important numbers. because 24 hours is one day. So one day from day 138 is 139. Any questions on that so far? The numerator will be that area. The denominator will be everything above 138 will be that area in purple. Any questions on that? So I need to find those two areas and then pop it in my calculator. So calculator time. And then I gotta divide. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go second distribution, normal CDF. And the lower again was 138. The upper was 139. The mean was 140. Standard deviation was seven. And I hit enter. Okay, any questions on that so far? And then I do the same thing, except now I wanna go 138 and up, right? So I can go second, distribution, normal CDF. So 138 to a bunch of nines. And then 140 and seven stay the same. I hit paste and enter. Okay, what's the last thing I need to do? Based on what I had in my, um, on the paper, on my paint. And remember? Yeah, I need to divide, not subtract, divide. Okay, so I'm gonna divide. So I'm gonna take 0 0.05565, I guess. 
and then divide by 0.6125. Okay, so there's about a 9% chance that the baby will be born in the next 24 hours. Any questions at all on this example? Any questions? So far so good? Okay, you wanna do one more? Okay, so let's do one more. Uh-oh, hate when it does that, just a minute. Try again. All right, so suppose that you have an ice cream store or an ice cream shop, and the amount of ice cream you sell every day is normally distributed with mean 950 ounces and standard deviation 120 ounces. Okay, find the probability that on a randomly selected day, you're gonna sell between 900 and 1,000 ounces of ice cream. Are you starting to see that these look similar? Not too much different than the birthing one. So as you're used to, we're gonna start by drawing a picture. Okay, we had our mean was 950. And we want the probability that we're between 900 and 1,000. Any questions on that? Professor, you can't, um, we can't see the problem. Oh, sorry. Let me, um, let me share. I guess the sharing didn't work. Thanks for telling me. Okay, so let me read it again. Sorry about that. Okay, suppose that the amount of ice cream you sell each day is normally distributed with me 950 ounces and standard deviation 120 ounces. So the first part is find the probability of randomly selected day, you're gonna sell between 900 and 1,000 ounces. Okay, any questions on that? So I draw a picture, and it's gonna draw between 900 and 1,000. Any questions on the picture? All right, so now I just pop it in my calculator. Pretty easy. So I just go second, distribution, normal CDF, and our low was 900. Our upper was 1,000. Our mean was 950. And the standard deviation was 120. That's all there is to it. And our probability is about 0.323, or about 32% chance. These don't look too bad, do they? I hope you agree. I try, especially for the first project, to make sure that the new material content isn't so bad because you can spend a lot of time working on the project. So I try and lighten up a little bit this week so that you can really spend your effort on the project. This should be a pretty simple, um, pretty simple uh, problems to do. 
Okay, let's go to the last question of the day, and then we'll call it. So it's going to be a little shorter than usual, which is good. Still between an hour and an hour and a half, but it's on the low side. Okay, if you want to be 99% certain, you're not going to run out. How much do you need to stock? So same idea. These are all the same. You draw a picture. We have 950. By the way, this helps a little bit. If you want to be 99% sure you're not going to run out, should you stock a lot or a little? What do you think? Yeah, a lot. So notice that the picture we're going to draw is going to have 99% over to the right of that value. Any questions on the picture? Okay. Calculator time. So let's do it. So all I do is I go second, distribution, and then what do I choose? Yeah, this one's the inv norm, number three. Brittany Kate, does that make sense? Because this time we're given the percent or the probability, we want to find the value of x. And that's always inverse norm. Whereas number two is normal CDF, and that's when you're given an x and you want to find the probability. I hit enter. The area is 0.99. Our mean was uh, 950. Our standard deviation was 120. And I go to paste and enter one more time. And there we go. We stock 1,229 ounces of ice cream. Any questions on this idea? All right, the last thing I'm going to do, any guess? Yeah, secret word. So let's do the secret word. And the secret word is area. Because when you're doing these normal distribution problems, it's all about finding the area, or given the area, finding the x. And that's pretty much all I have to say about chapter six. It's not one of the harder chapters. Um, hopefully, you can all get it. And hopefully, you won't spend too much time on it, because the project is what you're going to spend time on this week. And I want to remind you, um, hopefully by Thursday, <laughs> sure can use some, um, by Thursday morning at 8 in the morning, and hopefully earlier than that, you send me your draft. If it's sent later than Thursday at 8 in the morning, I don't look at it. So again, that's the final last chance. What was the answer for the last question? 1,229, approximately. Is that clear, Brittany? OK. Um, so that's all I have to say. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. But if you have any questions, let me know. Also, project questions, make sure you Post on the Project Dumb One discussion board. And I do have been checking. But I'll be happy to answer any questions or we can say goodnight too.
Okay, good night, Pooja. All right, good night, Kaladin. Good night, Kate. Any other questions? You probably say good night to everybody. Any questions? All right. Good night, see Mithya. And Mark, any questions? Last chance before we say good night. Okay, then I think I'll say good night and uh, please again ask any questions you have about the project by posting on the project uh, one discussion board. I'll be happy to answer and don't forget by by Thursday at eight in the morning. Um, if you haven't sent me the project, you can only post questions. I won't read the full draft, but if you send it, then I'll read it in the order at which they came. It takes me time to read them. So anyway, have a great night and I'll see you next Tuesday, I believe will be the next webinar. Um, but I'll, again, I'm happy to help you anytime this week.